Hey there, this is Erica from Adver Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. Next week, I'm presenting at a free online summit for educators all about using Google tools in the classroom. I'm talking about creating interactive notebooks, for example, so I'll link that below in case you want to get a free ticket to the summit. It's multiple days, there are Zoom calls, it's going to be a lot of fun, so I hope you join us. But in today's video, I was inspired to take a look at the new elements of Google Docs. Because if you haven't noticed yet, they have changed up the way you can work with this particular tool. And so in today's video, I'm going to show you the ins and outs of things that I think are really great about this new version of Google Docs. Let's dive on in. Looking through this, discovering these elements, it makes me think of Notion. So I'm kind of curious how much that inspired, that app inspired these changes. And I do have videos about Notion that I'll link below. So if you click the at sign, so if you do shift two, then this menu is gonna appear and you'll see different options of what you can do. And it's quite extensive. So it really, really reminds me of Notion. And so if you go through here, things that you can do, Email drafting is a new one, creating meeting notes, a roadmap for your product. So for example, clicking here, what's the product, what's the status of it, related files to it, notes about it. If you go down and again, you click that at sign and you see maybe reviewing a project. Okay, who's the reviewer? What's the status of what they're reviewing? Notes on it, keep going. project assets, all right, here's different files, and you can go down here as well, and you can kind of style it a bit as you want to. Uh, but description, status, so a lot of little tables that are being created for you very easily, as well as if you keep on going down, you can link other files to your document, of course, but then there's also different ways of having, for example, lists. So Obviously before, you can do the check mark numbered and bulleted list from the toolbar. It's not like that didn't exist before, um, but it's kind of easier to get to with the out sign here. And you can just say what it is and you can go ahead and start typing out your little checkbox list. You can add images, drawings, charts, again, things you could already do, but all in one place, finding them adding dates as well. So maybe you have some deadlines or you just want to have the, the, the day's date and you can add it in and it adds it in for you automatically. Various headings, calendar events that are tied to your Google Calendar. And then page components is a big one. So again, page numbers and count, nothing too exciting here. But what's interesting to me is watermarking. So if you're someone who is creating designs but you don't want it to be out in the world without your watermark, you can go ahead and select an image, scale it, you know, fade it, and then click done and add it in, or maybe just text and you have your name there. Again, you can do the format of whatever font you might want, um, the transparency, how light do you want it to be? So maybe very light here. Um, is it behind text or in front of it? And you say done, and now the watermark exists. So that one's an interesting one that I, I noticed recently. Horizontal lines are great for just kind of distributing and having a visual marker in between different content in your document. And what's cool as well is the table of contents option with page numbers or without page numbers. So let's say you do this, then if you have headings that exist, this table comments will be created. So for example, now when you create the table of content, It creates it for you right here. And when you click on it, you can go ahead and go to that portion of the document. This is one of my favorite tools in Notion, so I'm glad to see it in here as well. All right. Alongside that, footnoting obviously is something you can do pretty easily, but there is a link for that here, special characters. And then this was a cool one too, the drop down. So let's say we're gonna create a new drop down, and you can say, okay, well, what's it called? Where are the options? And then here as well, you can choose colors. And 
and then click Save. And so now you've created this little drop-down menu for whatever it is that you're talking about. So there's a lot of options here. I really recommend to take some time and just do that Shift A and just look through and see what they look like, see what interests you. If you want, you can click the expand here so you can see them more specifically, all the ones included in that section. So for example here, here's another one to show you. So that's the first thing I really wanna point out about Google Docs is using that at sign whenever possible to see how it might help you curate your documents faster. Besides that, a few things that maybe you know about, maybe you don't, so I thought I'd mention them here. If you go to File, you can see the version history of the document. So if you click See Version History, you can go back into the past a bit and look at older ones. And that can be really helpful if you've made a change and you've realized you prefer the prior version. You might have some luck here in seeing that prior version and just clicking that one to go with instead of your newer one. So that's something you consider. It's one of the best things about Google Docs, in my opinion, is the version history. If you're someone who doesn't want to use that Shift 2 to get to the App button, Insert also has this information as well. So as you can see here, the building blocks now exist right here. The watermark here, headers, page numbers, breaks, etc., table of content. So you can use this instead, the drop down, the dates. Emojis is not one we saw when we were doing the at, but you can do it here if you click in. Then you can decide what emoji to add there. So that's another one that you can use as well if you want shortcuts, the insert. So there's images that you can get from searching the web, something I point out in my presentation at the summit. And this can be really great if you just wanna make sure that you can insert stock photos to make your content a bit livelier visually. You can just do search the web rather than having to search your computer. And then let's say bamboo, and you can decide which ones to insert. And now they're in there and you can edit them down as you need to. So that's something to take advantage of if you're trying to create some visuals in your documents. The tools element is also helpful. There's the usual ones, the spelling and grammar checking and word count checking, but you can also compare documents. As you can see, it's a newer feature. So that's something you wanna consider as well, is just finding like wh what comparison document do you want to look at, compare it, and then you can see the similarities and differences if you have different versions of the same document filed separately rather than just going back into the version history of the one document. Also in tools, there's a citations element as well. That can be helpful. What citation style are you using? MLA or APA or Chicago? And so you can go ahead and click on the one and say, you know, add a source. What kind of source is it? Oh, well, it's a book and it's a print book. The IB, uh, SBN is this, and then you can search for it. So for example, if I do this ISBN and I search, it finds the information and you can say continue. You can see if anything needs to be updated, if it's correct or not. And then say add citation source, got it. And now you have it here and you can click cite and now it's added information automatically with, there for you. And all you need to do is put in that page number. So it's just really interesting if you're someone who's writing a lot of academic things and you're doing a lot of citations, using this could be a great tool to make it fast. It saves it here so you can cite as you go. Um, also, if you're teaching students how to do research, potentially you can show them this so that they have a quicker way to get started. But obviously, obviously talk to them about the importance of double checking to make sure it's accurate using Purdue Owl or whatever the case may be. So that's a cool one as well that I wanted to point out. If you've never bothered to look at the accessibility tools, I recommend doing so. Uh, in case you need screen reader support or a magnifier, you can use those options. So something to consider as well. And then also voice typing. So if you're someone who likes dictating information, that is an option as well for you to voice type and it saves it. It's pretty accurate, especially if you don't talk too fast. And then one last thing to point out in Google Docs is that if you're someone who doesn't use short keys a lot, like that shift to to get to 
the at sign, you can go to help and then look up the keyboard shortcuts and you can see different shortcuts that you can use when you are working in a document. And so it can be paragraph formatting, maybe an editing tool, menus. So you can look through here and find that information really easily rather than like Googling it or trusting on it elsewhere. The help feature actually tells you right here shortcuts that you can use when working with Google Docs. I hope you found that helpful, but as a reminder, the free summit is taking place next week where you can learn a lot more about different Google tools and how you can use them in your classroom. The link is down below and I hope to see you there. If you found this video helpful, click like and let me know and comment if you have your own thoughts on the new elements of Google Docs. I'll see you next time with a new video.